I'm back, baby. <laughs> yes. And to celebrate, I've got one fun topic for you, my friends. What do we got? On this video, to celebrate me coming back, very fun topic. We're going to talk about dementia and autism. Really? Cognitive decline is not fun. Welcome, my friend. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate your support. It means everything to me. I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy. I'm all about helping you raise your level of understanding, acceptance, and appreciation of the autistic community. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, you should join my communities because they're the bestest. Okay, check out my channels. Orion Kelly, that autistic guy, and my video podcast YouTube channel, Orion Kelly Podcasts. Let's explore the connection between autism and dementia. I'm gonna do my best to unravel the research and shed a light on why autistic people may be more prone to cognitive decline. As a starting point, I wanna be clear, I'm not a doctor, an academic, healthcare professional. I am just an autistic guy using my own lived experiences and my own personal research discussing a topic in general terms. If you want specific advice, you need to see your GP or family doctor. Plus, let's start by establishing some working definitions. Autism, ASD, it's a neurodevelopmental condition, a medically diagnosed disability. Dementia is a condition that affects the brain and causes problems with memory, thinking, and behavior. Now, dementia isn't actually a specific disease itself. It's in fact a term used to describe a group of symptoms that affect a person's cognitive abilities. The most common form of dementia is Alzheimer's disease, but there are other types as well, like vascular dementia and Lewy body dementia. In dementia, in general terms, there's a gradual and progressive decline in memory, reasoning, and the ability to carry out daily tasks. I wanna to get to some research now. When I say research, I mean like, let's, let's try and do a deep dive here and see what the research is actually saying about this connection. So please take it with a grain of salt because the research into the connection between autism and dementia is ongoing. It's ever evolving. It's not complete. Some studies suggest a potential link. Well, more robust research is required to fully understand the relationship. All right, Orion, so what does the science tell us? The research, okay. Now, there has been many peer-reviewed studies that have explored the relationship or the connection between autism and dementia. This video is in no way an exhaustive expression or demonstration of all the research, that's not possible. It's just a starting point, a conversation starter for you to go further and look into it if that's something you wanna do. As a bullet point, executive summary, headline kind of statement, I can tell you though, that research does indicate that autistic people may have a higher risk of developing dementia later in life compared to neurotypical peers, compared to the general population. A study in the Journal of Autism and Developmental Disorders in 2017 found that autistic people had an approximately three-fold increased risk of developing dementia compared to non-autistic people. Grain of salt, guys. Don't stress, grain of salt, okay? It's just one research. So let's dig deeper into the possible reasons behind this increased vulnerability. The first finding I'd like to discuss is around healthcare disparities. Although we didn't need research to tell us this, it's now clear that autistic people face barriers in accessing appropriate healthcare, including early detection and intervention for cognitive decline. Healthcare disparities, by the way, don't get me started on this, okay? As an autistic person, you can really struggle to navigate the healthcare system. And this is probably the same in the justice system because we can be so badly misread, so badly misunderstood, and also we can so badly misread and misunderstand the healthcare professionals talking to us, that there is this massive disparity in getting the appropriate, not just access, but the appropriate access to the healthcare we actually need. Don't get me started, seriously. Let's talk about some research. Now, a study published in the Journal of the American Geriatric Society in 2019 highlighted the healthcare disparities experienced by autistic adults, including inadequate access to geriatric services and lower rates of diagnosis and treatment for dementia. And what happens? Well, 
These disparities contribute to delayed or inadequate supports for cognitive decline in autistic people. Let's talk about longitudinal studies. <laughs> Don't make me say that again. <laughs> oh, you're making me say it again. Okay. Longitudinal... <laughs> longitudinal... Longitudinal studies that follow autistic individuals over an extended period have provided some really valuable insights into the relationship between autism and dementia. For example, a study published in JAMA Neurology, this is a big one, in 2020, analyzed data from a large health system and found that autistic people had a higher risk of developing dementia at an earlier age compared to the general population. So that, again, grain of salt, but that's what was found in some long-term research studies. Let's talk about brain imaging studies. These, mm, there's nothing about us that's autistic apart from our brain. That's just factual, okay? You don't have an autistic look or an autistic body, you have an autistic brain. Of course, without a brain, you're dead. So it's pretty much everything. But brain imaging studies, what can they tell us? Well, apparently, according to the research, advanced neuroimaging techniques have allowed researchers to investigate the structural and functional brain differences between autistic people and people with dementia or Alzheimer's. Now, a study published in Neuroimage Clinical in 2017 used MRI scans to identify shared patterns of brain atrophy in both autism and Alzheimer's disease, suggesting common neurodegenerative processes. Now, again, I'm just trying to give you the research, guys. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. You know, it's a grain of salt. I'm just trying to help you understand, you know, what's out there. All right, let's talk about cognitive profiles. Again, all relating to the research in the field currently, talking about a link between autism and dementia. So studies have explored the cognitive profiles and trajectories of autistic people who later developed dementia. A study published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease in 2017 found that Autistic individuals who developed dementia had distinctive cognitive profiles characterized by early impairments in executive function, memory, and visuospatial abilities. Did I say that right? All right, risk factors. Research has identified certain risk factors that may increase the susceptibility of autistic people to dementia or Alzheimer's. Now, a study published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease in 2016 reported that autistic people and people who have a family history of Alzheimer's disease had a significantly higher risk of developing dementia compared to those without a family history. In other words, people with a family history of autism or dementia have a increased risk compared to those without a family history. Now, in saying that, I'm no doctor, I'm no professor, but I would have thought that would be the same for the general population as well. Maybe I'm wrong, but if, if I am right, then that is not really a massive point, but still worth noting. The next bit of research I wanna talk about is neuropathological overlap. So neuropathological studies have provided insights into the overlap between autism and dementia or Alzheimer's at the cellular level. Wow, this stuff is really interesting. A study published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease in 2016 examined post-mortem brain tissue and identified similarities in the distribution of specific neuropathological features between autism and Alzheimer's disease. These findings suggest shared underlying mechanisms such as abnormal protein aggregation. Wow, and neuronal loss. You know, there's like two words I even understood I was saying, but man, it's interesting. Here's a bit of research I bet you didn't expect me to talk about, but it's happened, sex differences. So there's been some studies that have explored potential sex differences in the relationship between autism and dementia or Alzheimer's. Now a study published in Autism Research in 2020 analyzed a large data set and found that autistic women had a higher risk of developing dementia compared to autistic men. Wow. So this suggests that sex-specific factors may influence the vulnerability to dementia 
in autistic people. How about metabolic and vascular factors? Because we talked about there's a vascular dementia. Hmm. Let's have a quick look at that. So metabolic and vascular factors have been examined in relation to the increased risk of dementia in autistic people. Now this study, published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease in 2018, investigated metabolic and vascular comorbidities in autistic individuals and found that these factors contributed to an increased risk of dementia. Man, metabolic conditions such as obesity, diabetes, and hypertension may, if the research suggests is correct, exacerbate the risk of cognitive decline in autistic people. By the way, after we get through this research, I'm going to give you some key strategies. I'm talking peer-reviewed, research-based, key strategies to help you as an autistic person reduce your risk of dementia. So please, don't let this darken you or depress you or raise your anxiety. Let's go through the research, we're almost done, and then I've got some key strategies you do not want to miss. Another facet of the research looked into behavioral and psychiatric symptoms. So the presence of behavioral and psychiatric symptoms in autistic people may be associated with an increased risk of developing dementia. Now, this is a study published in JAMA Network Open in 2021. So again, this is kind of legit. It found that the presence of neuropsychiatric symptoms, such as aggression or depression in middle-aged adults who are autistic, was associated with a higher risk of dementia later in life. Addressing these symptoms early may be important in managing the risk of dementia. So there's always strategies, there's always preventative measures, and we're gonna to get to those in full in just a couple more research points. Sleep disturbances. So sleep disturbances, we know, are common for autistic people. Did you know they're also common for people with dementia? A study published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease in 2022 investigated the association between sleep disturbances and cognitive decline in autistic adults and found that sleep problems were actually associated with an increased risk of dementia. So addressing sleep issues may be crucial in managing the risk of cognitive decline for autistic people. Final one, then I've got some peer-reviewed research-based key strategies to help reduce your risk of Alzheimer's. Social engagement and cognitive function. So in this peer-reviewed research of recent times, social engagement has been associated with cognitive function and the risk of dementia. Now, a study published in JAMA Network Open in 2022 investigated the association between social engagement and cognitive decline in autistic people and found that higher levels of social engagement were associated with a reduced risk of dementia. Maintaining social connections may have a protective effect against cognitive decline. That's the research, my friends, and it's already started to tell us how we can get around this. But you know what? I don't want the research to get you down. Because my friends, we can do things to prevent our risk as autistic people. Okay, there is a suggestion. There is a potential link between autism and dementia. It doesn't mean all autistic people will get dementia. Nevertheless, I think some key strategies are useful regardless of a connection or no connection. Here are some key strategies that autistic people can consider to potentially reduce their risk of dementia. Physical exercise is the first key strategy. Please don't glaze over. This is crucial. This is critical. Engaging in regular physical exercise has been associated with a lower risk of dementia. It's just simple. Research published in the Journal of American Geriatric Society in 2021 found that physical activity was protective against cognitive decline. So, autistic people, please incorporate activities, any physical activities, walking, running, swimming, team sports, whatever physical activity in any form that can promote an overall general sense of well-being. In doing so, you can potentially reduce your risk of dementia. The next key strategy is cognitive stimulation. So keeping your brain active and engaged 
through cognitive stimulation may have a protective effect against dementia. A study published in Alzheimer's and Dementia 2021 highlighted the positive impact of cognitive activities on reducing the risk of dementia. Provide your brain with stimulation. Learn a new skill, learn a new language, do puzzles, read my book. <laughs> you know, play those brain training games, whatever floats your boat. Keep your noggin, your noodle, your whatever you call it, active and stimulated. Keep it engaged. Another key strategy to reduce your risk of dementia as an autistic person is to maintain a healthy diet. Now, first up, I get it, I get it. Autistic people, do we have healthy diets? Not always, not necessarily. We have safe foods, we have sensory issues, we rely on the consistency of certain foods and pretty much the only foods that are consistent are like pre-packaged. I get it, I'm totally understanding where you're coming from. Here's the thing, you're here, mate, you're here. You're a human, you're on earth, you can do you and roll the dice, or you can do a few things, make a few changes, and potentially give yourself a fighting chance. It's up to you. I'm not making you do anything. I'm just suggesting these are just key strategies. And what does a healthy diet for an autistic person mean in fighting off the potential risk of dementia? Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, omega-3 fatty acids, they have all been associated with lowering the risk of dementia. Research published in the Journal of the American Geriatric Society 2022 emphasized the role of a healthy diet in preserving cognitive health. So all you gotta do as an autistic person, I get it, I get it. I'm not saying just change everything. What I'm saying is try to incorporate, just try to slot in some nutritious foods into your diet and try to minimize the consumption of processed and sugary foods. I'm not saying stamp them out. Your safe foods are your safe foods. I'm saying try and find some sort of balance and it doesn't have to be 50-50. It just comes down to how much you want to make a change for your own health. But in the end, it's up to you. You may even want to follow a particular diet. A certain dietary patterns, like the Mediterranean diet, have been linked to a lower risk of dementia. Also, there's some research published in the journal Frontiers in Aging Neuroscience 2021 that highlighted the protective effects of the Mediterranean diet on cognitive health. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, fish, healthy fats can promote brain health. The next key strategy to help you as an autistic person reduce your risk of dementia is social engagement. Huh? Get stuffed. Maybe this is one of the reasons why there's a link. Autistic people, not all, but in general terms, autistic people struggle to make social connections, to have social interactions. Conversely, maintaining social communications, social connections, engaging in social activities has been linked to reducing the risk of dementia. Not great news for autistic people, but again, it comes down to, well, you know, you're here, you're on earth, you're living, what does it mean to you? Do you wanna push yourself into certain situations? It doesn't, again, this is like the foods. It doesn't mean stop eating the foods that keep you happy or keep you safe. It means how much of this can I allow myself, can I push myself, empower myself to do to make a difference? A study published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease in 2022 demonstrated the positive impact of social engagement on cognitive function. How can you do it? It's a good question. Group activities, maybe? I mean, social engagement, this can be, as you guys well know, you know, in online, right? It can be with just autistic peers, support groups. It's really up to you. Clubs, organizations, just connect with your peers, your community, whatever you can do to foster social interactions, foster social connections, research says is helpful in reducing your risk of dementia as an autistic person. Have you heard of brain healthy activities? Well, engaging in activities specifically designed to promote brain health may be beneficial in reducing your risk of dementia. A study published in the journal Frontiers in Aging Neuroscience in 2022 investigated brain training interventions and their impact on cognitive function. Autistic individuals should explore brain training exercises, memory games, any types of exercises that are aimed at maintaining and enhancing 
cognitive abilities, brain healthy activities. Interesting, get on them. Another key strategy for autistic people to reduce their risk of dementia is I forgot. <laughs> I, probably, I probably should take more notice <laughs> of my own. Oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, cognitive training programs. Oh man, I'm stuffed. Participating in structured cognitive training programs can help maintain cognitive function and reduce your risk of dementia. Another study from the Journal of the American Geriatric Society 2022 demonstrated the positive effects of cognitive training on cognitive abilities. So explore cognitive training programs specifically to enhance memory, attention, and problem solving. All things that autistic people, even those with ADHD, may struggle with. So this is about understanding, yes, we have a, a lot of these strategies are really highlighting our weaknesses or our challenges or whatever you want to call them, right? And that, yes, but we can just go, well, that's us and that's cool, that's your call. Or you can go, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and exercise this muscle. I'm gonna try and strengthen these weaknesses to make these challenges strengths. And potentially there will be a very big benefit. It's crucial to remember that further research is needed to fully comprehend the complexities of the relationship between autism and dementia. And if any thoughts, concerns, or questions have popped up during this video, my advice is to consult your GP or family doctor. I really do appreciate you being here, my friend. Have you got a topic you'd like me to cover in an upcoming video? Well, please, let's see it in the comments below. I'd love your feedback and your thoughts. I really do appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until my next video, thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.